everyone, my name is Amanda and this is Olivia and we're here with our founder and board certified dermatologist, Dr. Sandra Lee, to, <laughs> to answer questions all about acne. What is your number one tip for popping a cystic pimple? I would say don't pop a cystic pimple. I mean, if, you have a, if you're talking more, more of a cystic or nodular pimple, that's more of like a later stage of a, a, or a more severe form of acne, and that's usually deeper under the skin. So it's not going to work. If you try to pop that, you're not going to be able to get it out, and it's just going to get madder and angrier and bigger and scarier to you and also promote, uh, you know, increase the risk for scarring. That kind of thing is best to see a dermatologist and have it injected with a little low potency ster corticosteroid because it'll help to make it calm down or really putting product on there like a benzoyl peroxide spot treatment. Uh, you can get as high as 10% over the counter and that can help to keep your hands off of it certainly, but also help to uh, treat it as well. I Give have it, my spot um, treatment right here. Oh, good. Yes, that's great to have. You, you didn't even do this interview without that. You should have. I know. It would have been more authentic. I've been wearing it like every day. My parents walk out because I'm quarantining with them and they're like, yeah, I feel like, I feel like, is there a day, like a constellation day? We should do like a little dipper or a big dipper like on our face. Oh my gosh, we should. From, I'm sure uh, there is yeah. one. There's a national yeah. day for like everything. All I know, there. there is. There's there you go. Day. Always have this by my side. How do you deal with your own pimples? A couple months ago, I was getting the same one coming up here at this, you know, every like for three months in a row, along with Chrissy Teigen. She was having that issue too. And I was trying to tell her, I get the same thing. And, yeah. you know, it's that it never really comes to a head. It's almost like a little cystic pimple. It never really comes all the way up. So it kind of calms down after your hormones calm down a little bit. And then it rears its head again in another month. And what I do is I, I inject it with a little steroid um, because I do know that can help to calm it down. And sometimes it goes away. I think it might have gone away, actually. It's that kind of thing where you don't really remember it until someone reminds you. And that's good because it yeah. probably means that you got rid of it. But that happens. That's what I do. And or else I'll use my products. I definitely use my salicylic acid cleanser really on the daily um, I love it. I think it really helps to cleanse my, my, take my makeup off my face, but also I feel like it's giving it a little lightening treatment at the same time. I also think the uh, resurfacing acne swipes that we have, I love those as well. I think they're very easy to swipe across your face and even on your body, especially for me, I don't have acne in my body, but I get like little brown spots or little areas like that. So I try to swipe it on those areas, but that's what, that's what I'll do. Um, you know, I'm not a teenager anymore, so I don't really get bad acne, um, but I definitely get the Mount Vesuvius every now and then, or now it's Krakatau or whatever that place is called. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best moisturizer for acne from skin? The best moisturizer is always, if it's during the day, it's always one that has a little sunscreen in it, which is a great idea. People with acne, since we give them a lot of medications that may dry them out more, you want something that may be a little bit more moisturizing as well. Uh, so it just depends on your skin, really. If you're really oily, you're not going to need as heavy of a, as a moisturizer. But if you're really dry, you probably want something a little bit heavier, but that doesn't clog your pores. What would you recommend for acne scarring? Yeah, I try to really clarify with people. And I think it gives them a little hope because a lot of times patients will see me and they'll be so depressed or upset because they feel like they have all these acne scars. And I try to reassure them because a lot of the times, if you have active acne and you have those red spots or those brown spots after that acne, that's not really scarring. I tend to get the brown spots. It's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation because I'm darker complected. So I, I'm more on the brown side. Uh, people who are a little more have a red base, they tend to get the red spots instead called post-inflammatory erythema. And these are really just markings of you having a recent acne or a recent pimple there and that fades but it can take a while for it to fade so it can be really frustrating and also scary for people they think they're not going to fade um, but they usually do it just has a lot to do with the depth of the acne because you know you can have if you have very severe acne and deep-seated nodules and cysts 
that can certainly lead to acne scarring and that also produces that redness or the brown or that brown that brownness but if you really just get uh like standard i guess acne and you get a red spot or a brown spot afterwards usually that's going to fade uh if you have acne scars that are scars that you know you, you don't have active acne or you even have acne now but you notice that your skin is really irregular like really bumpy uh, changes in the contour of the skin that is something that you should see a dermatologist for uh, because I do think that there are treatment options but it's a little complicated it's not like um, it depends on the type of acne and it really kind of needs an office visit because I, I don't think I'm could really do this and assess that accurately um, in a video, for example, because you really kind of need to see it in three dimensions and you need to touch it and feel it and stretch the skin, all that kind of thing. Uh, but there's various things like chemical peels, uh, something called subcision, where we go underneath there and we try to break up the scar tissue underneath so that it lifts up. There's even fillers that we can do. Um, there's laser resurfacing, there's laser treatments for it. So there's a variety of different things. There's um, micro pen now uh, for that kind of thing as well, or micro needling. And it depends on the type of acne scars that you have uh, and how they sort of respond to movement or to, to our feeling the area. The best advice I have for you is if you have bad acne and it's not responding to whatever you're using, if it's over the counter or, you know, go back and see your dermatologist and, and change that regimen up because there should be something that we can find to help you. And, and I just, you know, think that that's important because you don't want to have, be in the position where you have acne scars that you really have you know, that you hate, that you want to have treated because it's a lot harder to, to treat them than to prevent them in the first place. Why do spot treatments sometimes work so well at zapping a pimple? I think spot treatments tend to be more potent. They're higher concentration, the highest concentration, at least in, in our products, SLMD products, they are the highest concentration you can get over the counter. And, um, that's why they're that's why they're potent. I think if you were to use a spot treatment all over your face, if you didn't really have pimples or oily skin, you you may you know it might dry you out too much, most likely. But if you could really focus on an area and get that oil diminished or try to treat the bacteria that are focally specifically in that area, you're going to have success with that. For people working in hospitals right now during this shelter in place, everything going on saying that they're experiencing acne flare-ups from their masks, right. what would you recommend to them? Well, people who are in the hospital, the healthcare workers, um, or even in grocery stores, and you know, everybody that is sort of having to wear a mask for a long duration, uh, they are noticing an increase in something called acne mechanica. And that's just as really the form of acne that is caused by um, occlusion or something always kind of touching and rubbing an area that can trigger acne. So I've certainly seen it where people have worn their, you know, their, their hat, their bouffant hats or something, a cap, and they get it across their face. They'll get it across their chin or, or around this area because they're wearing a mask. So I think over the counter products are really great for that. I think all the products, salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide, I think all that kind of stuff is really good. I think after they take the mask off, if they can use maybe like a little salicylic acid uh, wipe or something like that, like our resurfacing wipes, I think that will be really helpful to sort of help give you a little cleanse of your pores there before you actually go back and take a proper shower, you know, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. I think that that's um, a, a good idea. It's tough because, you know, you, you have to wear your mask, you have to wear this protective equipment. And, you know, these are the things that can come along with that, that we're, we're seeing. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of that with us. I miss you guys. I can't wait to see you guys in person. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for this. So I hope that I answered your acne questions, and I look forward to doing it again.